So today I'm going to talk about how grief perpetuates grief, or how grief can trigger grief, or how new death in our lives from other uh, people, pets, people that are in our lives can trigger or reopen those wounds of old grief. So let's talk about that today. All right. Hello, Wood fam. This is Leo with One Happy Widow. Um, this is like the third time in a row that I haven't been able to do a live uh, session because it's just birthday month. We had uh, we had a friend that had a birthday, and then last weekend we had my daughter. We celebrated her birthday, and then tomorrow or today when you're watching this, um, we are celebrating my husband's birthday, which is actually tomorrow, and our Sunday, and our friend. So, since Saturdays is the day to do the birthday stuff, uh, I'm going to do this recording and I'm just going to have it come out on the day that we would normally do a live. It's been a busy week um, just to catch you up. You know, I've been stressed out and I was going to do therapy and all that. Still planning on doing that. So I will keep you updated when, um, you know, when that starts going. But it's gotten a little bit better at least. Um, it's starting to wind down with my job. I've been on several job interviews. I've gotten um, a couple of offers. I'm holding out for one offer that I'm really hoping to get. I was hoping to get today, but they're doing some, uh, they're calling some references of mine. And so they have to, they have to talk to people and, you know, they have to talk to my references at least three before they can actually make an official offer. So, um, they've talked to two and they're still waiting to talk to one, my principal at my old job. So I don't think it's going to be an issue. I think they're going to offer me the position, but, uh, since it's Friday right now, when I'm recording this, I'm going to have to wait till Monday or Tuesday, maybe even, I don't know. But anyway, it's going to be a long wait, but I'll update you when I know something about that too. This is for next school year. So this is the busy time for teachers. My sister is also trying to get another job. So she's doing that whole thing. My coworker is trying to get another job. She's going through, we're all teachers. We're trying to, everybody's trying to do fruit salad toss up. So it's a stressful time right now <laughs> for educators. Um, but anyway, today I wanted to talk about how when we lose somebody, when we're already widowed, okay, we've lost our spouse. Um, it tends to make, future um grief more profound i think you should you could say um i think what happens is when we lose someone um within a short period of time either right before or after we've lost our spouse it just kind of um multiplies that grief that we have of being widowed and it's almost like it reopens an old wound it's like it rips a band-aid off or picks a scab off of that grief that we've been trying to you know heal from and um so sometimes it almost can seem like we're grieving too much i know that sounds weird but like maybe we're overreacting to the grief of someone that maybe wasn't s super close to us um but it's because we're actually, you know, the grief has been multiplied from the, the person that we lost, our spouse that we lost. All right. So let me explain that a little bit better. I feel like I'm rambling a little, but um, I've noticed that a lot of people who come onto the Facebook groups or who email me and talk about their losses, a lot of times they, they lump together when they have multiple losses in a short amount of time. It's almost like they you know, they, they feel it as a, a, as a, as a group. And, um, you know, they'll say, well, I lost my mom two years ago and then I lost my dad or then I lost my brother or my son. And then I lost my husband or something like that. And it's almost like they always put that lump, those things together in a group because the grief is compounded and multiplied. And it feels like it's, it's this big ball of grief. And every time we lose someone else, a pet or a person, you can just put that into the ball and the ball of grief just grows bigger if that makes any sense. So one way that we can multiply that grief or that grief happens is the death of another loved one. So you've lost your spouse and then maybe you lose a parent. Um, that's kind of common, you know, because if we've lost our spouse, we're grown, maybe we're even older. And so our parents are even the next generation up. And so the, the timing of losing our parents can sometimes coincide within that first year or two. And so it just compounds that grief even more. It opens up that wound again. Um, so it could be, you know, another close loved one, a sibling, a cousin, a, like I said, a parent, a child or something like that. Um, another way is the death of pets. Um, and I'll talk specifically about that, um, you know, when I get 
when I go when I go into more details. All right. So um, a lot of times we, you know, bring on pets into our lives after we lose our spouse and um, pets don't live as long as people do. And so, you know, you might get five or 10 years out of a dog or a cat, maybe, you know, sometimes a little bit more, but at some point there's going to be a loss of that pet. And so the loss of that um, person, I mean, that the loss of that pet that, you know, means so much to us, sometimes that pet helped to um, fill some of the loneliness that we were having when we lost our spouse. And so now we're feeling that loneliness all over again. And then um, sometimes it's just the death of people that we know, acquaintances or coworkers or things like that, that probably would just, if we were not already grieving our spouse, we might be like, oh man, that, you know, that's really sad. But instead it kind of hits us a little harder, you know, and um, and I'll explain that too, about how this kind of all came up. And the reason why I'm doing this topic is because this has kind of affected me um, as and kind of a lot this last week or two. So I'll go back to shortly after my husband died. When, after Dewey died, I came back to work um, and I worked in a school. He died over summer vacation. So I came back to work and my daughter, who was 15 at the time, she came, she was a student there where I was working. So she came back too. And it was one of those really tragic years where we lost several students that next year, the next two school years. Um, and to be honest, the timeline is, is a little fuzzy on me. I don't know if it was the very next year all at once, or if it was just over the two years, cause I was grieving too. So I can't remember, but the point is we lost a student to, um, we're not sure if it was suicide or an accidental death. Um, and she was a student that I, I didn't teach, but I, I, I knew of her and I, and I taught one of her siblings. And so I, I knew who she was. Um, there was another student that um, died from, we're not really sure if it was suicide or accidental. So two of those within a short period of time. Um, we lost another student to a car accident and we lost another student to a hit and run. He was walking across the street and he was struck by a car at night and um, and he was left to die in the street. So, um, and I, I, I feel bad, but I don't remember if there was another one or not, but I know there was at least those four students that, um, that we lost. And, uh, my daughter knew every single one of those kids. I only knew the one, um, even though they were at my school, we had 2000 kids almost in our school. So I didn't, you know, I didn't know the, the other ones, but, um, my daughter knew all four of them fairly well. And as a matter of fact, one of them, um, she thinks that she might've been the last person to text him, um, before he died, uh, because the timing of when he died and when the last time she texted with him, she may have been the last person that she texted with, that he texted with, uh, before he was killed. So, um, so it, and it seemed like those deaths, I mean, when you're in high school and you lose a classmate, that's devastating anyway, but she was, you know, grieving her dad. And it seemed like as soon as she could get a hold of her life and start putting one foot in front of the other, she lost a classmate. And then a few months later, another one, and a few months later, another one. And she just was like, she was getting beat down. And as soon as she would look up, she was getting beat down again. And it really did a number on her emotionally. Um, she is the one that struggled the most from, you know, from shortly after her dad died until probably just recently, she's finally started to, you know, try to look ahead and put her life together and, you know, try to put the pieces back together. So um, it's just like the grief of the loss of her friends was that much more intense because she was already grieving from the loss of her dad. And so she, I can remember her telling me, mom, I can't, I don't think I can take much more of this. Like how many more people do I have to lose in my life, you know, before? I mean, I just, I'm crying about it now because I just can't even imagine the pain that she had to have been going through as a 15, 16 year old girl to just keep on feeling these losses over and over again. In addition to that, we lost um, one of our pets um, pretty shortly after he died. So we had a dog and he was 16. And so he was just hanging in there. And to be honest, he wasn't, I wasn't really close to him because he was kind of a 
kind of a jerk, but um, he was like a cat in a dog's body. But he was really close to the kids. He had been born at the same time as Braylon. They were five days apart, literally. And so I brought her home from the hospital and brought him home when he was five weeks old. And like they grew up together. So here she was, had just lost her dad. She's 15, 16 years old. And, um, and he dies of old age, you know. Well, she didn't take that very well. Then she, she kind of got into this um, animal hoarding phase, you know, where she was just bringing pets home and pets home and pets home. Every time you turn around, she's bringing an animal home. And um, I think she was trying to replace, you know, that lonely feeling that she had. And so she brought home guinea pigs. And then she, I don't mean to laugh, but she left them outside. She put them in their cage and left them outside for some fresh air because she thought, oh, well, it's springtime. It'll be fresh air and, you know, they'll they'll love it. Well, and she left them out there for a couple of hours and um, they perished. And we didn't know that at the time, but they are very, um, they're very fragile animals. So she didn't leave them out there to die. She just left them out there for fresh air and came back a couple hours later and they were dead in the cage. So um, I think they just, the sun beat down on them or they thirsted to death. I, I really don't know what happened exactly, but she just left them out there for a little bit and they um, they died. And so she felt horrible because she loved those little things and it was her fault that they passed away, but it was an accident. And I mean, she was devastated. We got a couple of birds. Um they got out of the cage and, you know, they escaped. And so um, I'm sure they probably didn't last very long in the wild. Um, so we had a couple of other animals too. She ended up, she had ferrets and one of them, uh, they went, to, they ended up staying at her grandmother's house and one of them drowned in the hot tub. They went swimming and couldn't get out. And, um, and, and they drowned and they died. So um, we just like had the worst case with pets. Um, and so it was just, like I said, it was within that first year after, and it was just, it was devastating for her. It was really tough on her. So, um, and then just recently, the reason why I decided to talk about this now is because just recently, um, we've had one of our fellow WIDFAM members, somebody that was on our group, and, um, she had a dog. She has a dog. And, um, the the dog was really close to her husband and her husband had passed away and now her dog is um, has to be put down because she has I think she has cancer or some kind of terminal um, illness and so she's going through this whole grieving process all over again she's posting pictures on our group um, I don't really want to call her out by name just in case you know, I don't really want to invade her privacy, but I know she watches all these videos. So you'll know if, I, that if she's talking about, if I'm talking about her, but, um, you know, she, she posted some things with pictures of her husband and her dog and then her dog laying down all covered up and, um, you know, and trying to figure out when is a good time. And she knows that the time is coming and she's having to go take her in to get her, to get her dog um, put down. And she even made the comment that she feels guilty that she is the one that's, you know, having to kill her dog, even though that's not what she's doing, but she feels that way. She made the comment that she feels that way. And then she also made another comment about, well, now my husband is gone and now my dog is gone too. And now they're going to be in heaven together. And so I could tell that the loss was kind of wrapped up in her grief of her husband. And so I, it kind of brought back those memories of my daughter and, and her losing her pets and how that affected her. And then, um, the icing on the cake, I guess you could say was, um, I had a, a Facebook friend, um, from someone that I went to middle school and high school with a man that I went to high school and middle school with. And we were, um, I mean, we never dated or anything like that, but we were in all the same classes together because we were in the gifted classes. And so we pretty much had the same classes, same teachers. And so we knew each other very well. Now I had not seen him since, I mean, I think I might've seen him at our 10 year reunion. That was 20 years ago, maybe if I remember correctly. But I mean, other than that, I had not actually seen him, you know, since we graduated from high school together. We weren't like best buds, but we did run with the, a lot of the same crowds in high school and we were Facebook friends. And so we had, you know, we chat here and there every once in a while, just, you know, how's things going? And you know, how you just kind of keep in touch with your, with your old buddies from high school and super, super nice guy would have given you the, you know, the shirt off his back. Really, really smart. I mean, super, one of the smartest people I've ever known. And, um, and it was his birthday 
um, yesterday or the day before. I can't remember, but you know how Facebook will tell you, oh, it's so-and-so's birthday. And I don't want to mention his name either, but um, it's so-and-so's birthday. And so I was like, okay. And I went on there onto his birthday and I, happy birthday, friend. And I put it up there and then I noticed where all the birthday wishes were underneath. It was like, happy heavenly birthday. And, ha and you know, so, all right, rip, rip, you know, his name and, and all these things. And I was like, wait a minute, what? And, um, and so then I started going back to his page. Cause like I said, we're not, we weren't super close friends, you know, we we're just kind of acquaintances. And so I went back to his page and I saw the last time that he had posted. And then I saw a bunch of other things where people were posting with tagging him and talking about memories of him. And, and it turns out he had passed away in February and this is April. So he died two months ago. And, um, you know, like I said, it's, I don't go on Facebook all that much except for our group very much anymore. And so I felt so horrible that I had, you know, put out there, happy birthday and put an exclamation point and, and it went up there and then come to find out that he was not even alive to see the message. And so I went back really quick and edited because I didn't want to make it sound like, you know, so happy of a day. And so I, you know, I adjusted my message to say, I'm so sorry to hear that you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't be receiving my, my birthday message in person. And, um, you know, just a few little words and, um, like it really struck me and I don't know why, because like I said, I, I don't know why I just, I keep thinking about it. I keep thinking about him and I keep thinking about how sad, how sad because he is my age. And even though he's older than my husband, Dewey was 42 when he died, this guy was probably either just turned 50 or almost about to turn 50. And, um, you know, he was in, he'd been in declining health for a while, you know? Um, but from what I hear from another person who had talked to him, like the night before he had had some kind of health scare or something and was taken to the hospital. And he went in that night and he even texted his friend and said, you know, um, it's kind of scary to think that sometimes, uh, when sometimes people go into the hospital and they never come out. And he said, but I don't think that's going to be me, you know, this time. Like he made some kind of comment about, you know, I'm going to be fine. But one of these times when, you know, when you go into the hospital, you never come home. And he texted her that. And that was the last thing he texted to her. And I don't know exactly how he died or, you know, I don't know the details. And it's not really appropriate to go around asking those kinds of questions because it doesn't really matter, right? I mean, does it matter how they died? The ma The fact that the matter is that he we lost him. And so I'm, you know, I was kind of baffled at the fact that I'm getting weepy about it because I haven't seen the guy in 20 years. And before that, I hadn't seen him in 10. So it's not like he is missing out of my daily life. You know, it's not like there's, it's not like I'm going to miss talking to him every day or whatever. You know, I probably talked to him. I probably texted him on Facebook, messaged him on Facebook, maybe two or three times a year you know, like holidays or just how's it going? How's your kids or whatever? You know, he would check on me a couple of times after Dewey died and just say, how are you doing? Is there anything I can do for you just to be nice? And so, um, I thought about it for a couple of days and I thought, why, like, why, like right now, why am I getting so upset? I'm not trying to make light of his death at all. I'm just saying like, why is it making me so weepy to hear about him dying? And I think it's because you know, it's just bringing back all the memories. I kept thinking about his wife. I don't know her. Um, but I, I, I reached out to her after I found out that he died and I invited her to our group. And I think she's, um, and she, and she, I friended her also and just let her know, you know, who I was and how I knew him and, um, you know, our resources. I invited her to our group and to the faith, you know, to the YouTube. And, uh, I think she, she messaged me back and said she had um, applied. So I'm going to go in there and let her in. And so I just kept thinking about, like, I kept going back to uh, thinking about what she, where is she in her grief, you know, right now? And I know all of you have been there. Like everybody who's watching this and everybody in our group has also been through this, but it is different when when you know somebody on a screen and for through email, you know, or whatever. And when, and it's somebody that you saw in person, there is something more real about knowing that it, it was a real person that you knew and you talked to. And so I just thinking about her and what she might be going through. I don't think they had any children. And so I don't know a lot about her situation or her job or, you know, I know she's back to work, but anyway, um, 
I think it's just hitting home that much more because um, I know what she's going through. And it has kind of ripped off a bandaid of grief for me because I don't, I don't cry every day. You know, it's been almost five years, so I don't cry every day. Um, I don't cry every week. You know, sometimes I'll sit and think and just give him some thoughts and I'll have a memory come up. And most of the time I'll just give a little a chuckle, you know, or I'll cry or I'll, I'll laugh or something or just share a memory. But like to actually sit down and weep and cry, it doesn't happen all that much anymore. So I think what has happened is just all of this stress and then the news of him passing. And I don't know why, but I feel so guilty that I did not know for two months there's not any way I could have known, but like, I felt so bad because I'm like, I, I saw his birthday thing come up and I, whenever my friends come up on their birthday, I just say, Oh, happy birthday. You know, I just wish him that. And just to find out that he's been gone for two months and, and I didn't like, I'm just now finding out. I don't know why I feel so weird about that. <laughs> like, it's just strange that I feel guilty. Like I should have, like I should have known it earlier or something and reached out, but I, I try not to reach out to people that I know who become widowed when they're like in fresh grief because I don't want to like seem like a vulture. <laughs> like you don't want to contact somebody like two days after their funerals, their husband's funeral and say, hey, by the way, I got this, you know, <laughs> this widow's group or whatever. Like I don't like I don't do that. I don't want to do that. And since it's been two months, I felt like that she might be at that point where she might need some support. And she probably doesn't know anybody in person that's widowed that, you know, can relate to her. And so um, anyway, <sighs> that's the topic for today is let me see. I had some notes, so I just want to see if um, if I missed anything. No, I think that's pretty much it. But I just wanted to talk about, you know, that situation about how um, I think we're just much more. um um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Like we're more sensitive to death and to the grief from death. You know, I think we feel it a little bit harder or, you know, more acutely, um, because we're already kind of at that low level of constant grief all the time anyway, and always will be. But anyway, if you have, um, experienced something similar to this, like the loss of a pet or the loss of, you know, someone that you knew and, and felt it a little bit more acutely than you expected to, and were kind of, you know, baffled by that, then, um, you know, maybe, maybe this kind of hits home for you and, um, put, put a comment in, uh, in the comments below and just let me know if you've been through anything like that, or if you've experienced something like that. Um, don't forget if you are not a member of our group, Facebook groups, um, facebook.com slash group slash one happy widow. Also, um, don't forget if you want your journal pages with uh, one happy widow.com slash journal, I'll put all these links in the description below so that you'll be able to get there. But, um, and, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So those are your free resources. Feel free to, you know, take them up and use them however you'd like to. And hopefully next week we'll be doing a live session. And I've already got somebody that approached me with a topic to talk about. So I already know what we're going to talk about next week. But um, take care of yourselves this week. And I'll be sure to update you on everything that's going on. And um, And I guess we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>